Hey guys, it's Mr. Lowry here. Um, congratulations, you made it to our last lesson of the year. Um, <clears throat> we definitely are going to do some review later this week to help get it ready for the final. But this is like the last, you know, new stuff that I want to make sure that you guys know. And this is stuff you're going to see again in SM2. And when you go into SM2 and you start seeing this stuff, I want to make sure you're prepared and uh, it doesn't like go over your head. So it's a good thing to, to hit. It's a good thing to talk about because um, you're going to need it next year. So what I wanted to talk about real quick um, was these triangle congruence theorems. Okay, so let's talk about congruent triangles for a second. Remember that a congruent triangle, or two triangles are congruent if they have three congruent sides and three congruent angles. So like we talked about congruent figures, so we know if two figures are congruent figures, there's a transformation that maps all the pieces onto the other, all the other pieces. So congruent figures will have like, you know, all three sides will be congruent to each other, right? And then all three angles will have a corresponding congruent angle, right? So something like that. Um, that's what congruent figures are. But the idea is to show that they're congruent or to prove that they're congruent, is there less information? Do we have to have every single piece congruent to every single other piece before we say we have enough information to say they're congruent? And one of the things that we showed last time is that you don't. You really only have to show that a side, an included angle, and a side are congruent, and then the rest of the stuff has to be congruent as well. So um, if you have two triangles that have two sides and an included angle congruent to each other, then you know the triangles are congruent. So let me give you an example of that that we did, just as kind of a way of review. So these obviously don't look super congruent. Sorry about that. Let me see if I can make that a little bit better. Okay. So if I had this guy congruent to this guy, and this guy congruent to this guy, and this guy congruent to this guy, that would be enough information to say these are two are congruent. Because there's really only, you know, at this point, there's only one way to complete uh, the triangle with a set side, a set angle, and a set side. So if we have this minimum information, we can say these two are congruent. Okay, now there's other congruence theorems out there. So the idea is, you know, what's the minimum amount of information that you need to know to know that two triangles are congruent? So here are five. Um, we talked about this one already. And this one we're going to kind of, um, this is kind of a special case because it has to do with right triangles. So we're going to say that for SM2. Um, and we talk about that a little bit more, uh, more in that one. But um, we're going to focus on these four. Okay, so this is the one you have already. Let's look at the other three. Okay, so this one says if you have three sides congruent to three sides, then the triangles are congruent. Okay, so that's that's called that side 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 congruence theorem. Um, if you have angle side angle, you hit so two angles in the included side. Notice that the side has to be in between the two angles. Okay, um, so that's another way. If you have two angles and an included side, uh, then the two triangles are congruent. And the other one is angle angle side, which is two angles and a non-included side, but it has to be like the corresponding side. So you can't have like these two angles and this side and then two angles in this side. That wouldn't work. It has to be the corresponding side. Okay. So those are like four congruence theorems that you can use to show that two triangles are congruent. If you have this information, this minimal information, you can say that two tri triangles are congruent. Let's talk about what we don't have. Okay. What is not a congruence theorem? Okay, so there's, there's a couple of them. One is angle, angle, angle. If you have three congruent angles, you can't necessarily say the triangles are congruent. I'll show you why that is in a minute. Um, and another one, actually, instead of writing in my textbook, let me just write it on a piece of paper. Okay, so angle, angle, angle is not a congruence theorem. Okay, another one that we talked about is this one right? Angle side side. That one doesn't work. Um, now there's a special case where if you have a right triangle, this works, but um, only in right triangles, which is where we're going to kind of save that for later. But another one you might, you might see this written, because this is kind of funny, like most books don't write it this way for obvious reasons, right? Because that spells something else. <laughs> um, I write it this way because I think it's memorable enough, it sticks in your head, so you know, okay, don't use that one. But this can also look like this. Right? 
So you're talking about the angle is not in between the two sides. So these don't work either. Okay, so um, the reason why the angle, angle, angle thing doesn't work is because you can have three congruent angles and just like enlarge this triangle. And if you enlarge this triangle, you'll still have the same angle measurements, but the sides will be different. This is what's called a dilation. So these aren't necessarily congruent. They're similar, which is you know a special mathematical word we're going to talk about next year. So they're similar triangles, but they're not congruent triangles. Okay. Um, I wanted to go through a little bit of the reasoning behind these. These are kind of th these can be kind of tricky to prove. I showed you this one, or some reasoning behind this one. Um, there's kind of a way to prove this one. Th there's a way to prove all of them, but sometimes the proofs get so long and so complicated and so wordy that it's maybe not worth going through. But I do want to show you the reasoning behind it. Okay. So let's start with SSS real quick. And then we'll do ASA and AS, AAS, and then we'll practice using them. Okay, so we're going to start with side, side, side congruence. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to kind of set this up um, this way. So let me, I'm going to take a triangle here. And let's just say that we had a triangle like this. And then we had another triangle that was kind of set up next to it. Like this. Okay. Now you might be thinking, well, what if they're not next to each other? The thing about them not being next to each other is since we have congruence transformations, regardless of where the triangles are originally, we can always flip them and move them around to get them in this orientation. So what we're going to do is we're going to set it up like this. So that there's two triangles that um, have three congruent sides, okay? And we're gonna prove that these have to be, the triangles themselves have to be congruent. So we know the sides are congruent, we don't know the triangles are congruent, that's what we're gonna do. That's what we're gonna try to prove. Okay, so the, the proof goes a little something like this, and this is kind of what it looks like in your book, but there's a lot of, it's really wordy in your book. What they do is they create two isosceles triangles, okay? They're going to draw that auxiliary line. So remember, an auxiliary line is a line that you use to um, just kind of add to your proof. So notice right now that this guy right here is an isosceles triangle, which means we can use the base angles theorem to say that this angle and this angle are congruent to each other. So um, they, I think, use numbers in your books, in your book. So we can call this like angle one and angle two. Okay. So we know angle one is congruent to angle two because of the base angles theorem. So remember with isosceles triangles, the base angles are congruent, okay? Now this is also an isosceles triangle. So you got like three and four here. So you can say like angle three is congruent to angle four. By the same reason, because this is an isosceles triangle, the base angles are congruent to each other, okay? Now that you have that, you can say that um, like this big angle right here you can call it like, I don't know, angle 5 or something. Angle 5 is equal to um, the measure of angle 2 plus the measure of angle 3. So we're just using the angle addition postulate. And you can call this guy 6. Angle 6 is the measure of angle 1 plus the measure of angle uh, 4. Okay. So we know these two guys are congruent to each other. We know these two guys are congruent to each other. Therefore, when we add these two congruent angles up, this big angle right here for this guy is congruent to this big angle for this guy. Okay, and notice what that gives us. So we're, we're kind of looking at the triangles left and right, but now we consider this line again, and we're really talking about this triangle and this triangle because that's what we started with. And we got side, angle, side, side, angle, side. And since we already proved that side, angle, side gave us congruent triangles, then we know these two triangles are congruent. So by starting with side, 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 and then kind of setting it up cleverly, you end up with side, angle, side, which gives you congruence. And we already, we already kind of proved that. Okay, so that's in your book. If you want to go look at that, you can, you can do that. Um, it, like I said, it's a little bit complicated, but I kind of wanted to walk through um, just the reasoning behind that. 
So that is right here on page 618. So they start with two triangles that have side, side, side. They use congruence uh, transformations to flip it around. And then they draw this little line down there. Now they numbered theirs differently, but it's the same idea. If you have two congruent to four and one congruent to three, then one plus two is congruent to three plus four, which means you got side angle side on the top triangle and the bottom triangle. So that's kind of how you get that one. I'm not gonna ask you to prove that one because like I said, it's, it's kind of long and complicated, but that's the idea behind it, okay? Okay, a couple more really quick. Then we're just going to talk, talk about some reasoning here. So not formal proofs, but just to kind of, just so you know. Let's talk about um, the angle side angle, okay? So let's, let's set up a side, an angle, and a side, okay? So here's a side, and I'm just going to kind of make up an angle. And I'm going to make up another angle here, let's say this one. Okay, so let's say I wanted to like, if I have a, let's see, so I have a, a side here, right? And I have a set angle and a set angle. I can't change these things. So I just drew rays, right? How many rays are there to complete the triangle? Well, the, the main idea here is there's only one place where these rays can intersect. So as soon as you have a, a set angle and a side and another set angle, there's only one way to finish that triangle. If I were to copy some of these things, like if I were to do a transformation and I wanted to copy just the segment length right here and then just that angle, I'm going to try to, this is like a, not a perfect copy, but we could do it with protractor and compass if we wanted to. So let's say I only want to copy the angle, the angle, and the side. It's going to be the same triangle because there's only one way to finish this triangle. So with like a, a fixed angle that you can't change and a fixed angle you can't change and a fixed length, there's only one place where those rays intersect. And so you can, you know, copy two angles on a side, two angles on a side, and you're going to be able, you're only going to be able to get one triangle. So that's kind of similar to the side, side, side reason that we showed. Um, and then the angle, angle, angle one, or excuse me, the angle, angle side is very, very similar to this one. And this is kind of the idea. Um, let's say you have two triangles and you have angle, angle, side. So I'm going to kind of do these, just kind of copy these over. Okay, so something like that. So let's say that we knew that this angle was congruent to this angle and this angle was congruent to this angle and then this side was congruent to this side, okay? You might be thinking to yourself like, oh, well that's angle, side, angle, right? Well, the order is important here. So this is saying the side has to be the included side. So this doesn't work. We have to have this side to, to use angle, angle, uh, angle, side, angle, excuse me. So this is a different setup, right? But here's the thing. Let's, let's think about this for a second. Let's say this angle is 40. And let's say this one is 60. Right? What does this one have to be? Well, 40 and 60 is 100. This has to be 80, which means that this has to be 80. So you can do this with any different measurements. If this one's congruent to this one and this one's congruent to this one, and they have to add up to 180, there's only one option that will add up to 180 with the other angles. So if you have two angles that are congruent to each other, the third angle has to be congruent to each to each other because there's no other way to add up to 180 and it doesn't matter what your, your measurements are. Let's say this one's 45 and this one's 45. Okay, let's say this one's 65 and this one's 65. Well, if you add these two up, it's going to give you 110. If you add these two up, it's going to give you 110. You're always going to get the same sum from the same two congruent angles, which means the third angle has to be the only number that will add with that sum to, to be 180. So whenever you have two angles congruent to each other, you also get the third angle. But now check it out. If I have this third angle congruent, 
I have angle side angle. So anytime you have this, you also get the other angle, which means you have angle side angle. So two angles and a side. The third angle you're going to get for free, which means you always have this one. So ang uh, angle angle side is basically just like a subcase of angle side angle because you're always going to have, if you have two angles congruent, you're always going to be able to get that third one as well. So that's just a really kind of down and dirty um, explanation of these congruence theorems and where they come from. Now again, I'm not going to I'm not going to make you prove where they come from in this assignment. A lot of times we do that. Um, but um, I do want you to know kind of that reasoning because you may have to prove them later on in SM2. Okay, so this is, this is where they all are. Now this one we're ignoring. We're going to save that for next year. But these are the, the four congruence theorems. Okay, remember that angle, angle, angle is not one of them. Okay, also angle side side or side side angle are also not in this list. So if we want to show that two triangles are congruent, we can do that. Um, we just need to use one of the, one of the valid um, congruence theorems. Okay, so in the next video, I'm going to show you how to use those on this assignment. And we'll go through some examples with you. So tune back in for that one.